How's it going everyone? We are back with some more heat mat experiments, this time using sunflower as a crop, and we actually follow this all the way to harvest day to see how much quicker we can get to harvest. So stay tuned for the results. Okay, so I'm really excited to see how these sunflowers are gonna perform when one has heat and the other does not. So let's quickly talk about what's the same for all of these trays. So every single one of these trays has been seeded with 125 grams of sunflower per tray, and they all had a two hour soak time at 5.5 pH. All of them have the exact same tray set up. The only difference is the coloration of the trays. The purple trays over here, these are gonna be the ones that do not go on the heat mat. They are gonna go on the shelf below the heat mat. The orange ones right here, these are going to go onto the heat mat, which is above the non-heat mat trays. So on our last test, we saw that amaranth did really great, as well as a few other crops on the heat mat. So now let's come to one of the most popular crops, which is sunflowers. I have a feeling that these are gonna germinate really quite well from the added heat, but we'll get to that in the experiment. So let's quickly talk about our shelves. All right, so we are at the shelves now where the heat mat and the no heat mat is gonna be. So let's quickly talk about the heat mat shelf. This is a 48 by 20 inch heat mat by Vivo Sun, and it is controlled right here by their thermostat. We currently have the thermostat set to 78 degrees. That is because our grow space right now averages about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, probably around 69 to 71 is what we usually average. So this is gonna be about seven to eight degrees warmer than the ambient room temperature of our grow space. And on our other tests, we've seen that that actually does provide a pretty substantial amount of growth. The shelf below it, this is gonna have no heat mat. This just has our shelf liner here, as you can see. And the reason we chose to do this, uh, the non-heat mat on the trays below is because heat rises and we didn't wanna put the germination trays above it. So remember, purple are going to go onto the non-heat mat. And the orange, these are going to go onto our heat mat. All right, and the last brick goes on. Okay, so I'm really excited to see how these trays turn out. I have a strong feeling that the sunflowers are gonna love the added heat. Uh, so what we're gonna do from here on out is I'm gonna come out, I'm gonna miss this in the nighttime, and then every morning we'll pull these bricks off and we'll take a look and we'll talk about the germination. So I'll see you guys in the morning. So these sunflowers have now been germinating for about 20 hours. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off all these lids and let's take a look at our growth. So something I wanna show real quick is the amount of moisture difference between, this is no heat mat, and then this is the heat mat. Do you see all that moisture right there? That's really helping with germination. Tap this off. So remember the orange trays are our heat mat and the purple are our non-heat mat. On our orange, we're beginning to see these radicals really coming out of these seed holes. So let's come over here to our non-heat mats. So I am seeing a few of these radicals beginning to push out uh, on both of these trays, but not to the extent that I'm seeing it on our heat mat tray over here. So, so far we are seeing a slight advantage on the heat mat side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these both watered, get them put back on the shelf, and I'll check in with you guys tomorrow and we'll see if there's even more of a difference. Okay, so we're on day two of the sunflower heat mat germination trial. If you'll remember, the orange trays are our heat mat trays and the purple trays are our non-heat mat. So as you can see, everything is germinating all across the board, though I would say that the heat mat trays are slightly ahead, but we'll get to that in a moment. Taking a look at our non-heat mat trays, you can see that the radicals have begun to push out of the seed holes and they're starting to dive down and dig into this coca coir medium and the germination looks great across both of these trays. Comparing it to our heat mat trays though, I would say that those two trays are behind because the heat mats have really begun to dive down into that medium and to the point where the cotyledons are actually beginning to push their way out of the seed holes entirely. So I would say that we're almost about a day ahead on growth on this heat mat tray compared to our non-heat mat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some water added to these, put the trays back on top, get our bricks on all of these, put them back on their designated shelves, and then I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, so we're on day three of this sunflower germination trial with these heat mats, and the results are getting pretty drastic here. Uh, so again, let's recall, orange is heat mat, and the purple is the non-heat mat. So I would say that the purple is pretty close to where the, yellow, or the orange trays were yesterday. Uh, the growth is really great. A lot of the cotyledons are beginning to start to push their way out of the seed holes and most of the radicals have begun to dive down into the coca coir growing medium. As for the heat mat trays, these are germinating really, really well. They're already mostly pushing off uh, their seed holes. 
And I think about one more day underweight and these things are gonna be ready to go into blackout for a slight stretching. The germination is really great across this tray and I can actually feel the warmth coming off of this tray still. Uh, compared to this one over here, I'm not feeling the same thing. So, so far we have some pretty drastic results here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these back onto their shelves, get them some water first before I do that. And then I'll see you guys tomorrow and we'll see how they look. All right, so we're on day four of this sunflower heat mat experiment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all these bricks removed. And this is probably gonna be the last day that the heat mats ones are gonna have a brick on top because I think we've gotten most of the seed holes off. Okay, well, everything is looking beautifully. So I'm sure you guys remember because I pointed out every single day, the orange ones are gonna be our heat mat and the purple ones are our non-heat mat. So starting over on our purple ones, uh, the growth looks really great. We are beginning to see these cotyledons coming out of these seed holes. Uh, the germination is solid across the board. Everything does look really, really nice. And onto our heat mat, uh, you can see that these are just a little bit further in this process. Now they've completely, the majority of them have uh, shedded off that seed hole and the growth looks great on these. And these guys are ready to start getting stretched and go into the light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these into blackout today to stretch these for one day. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get everything watered now, uh, put the two heat mats into uh, blackout, put the brick back on top of our non-heat mat, and then I will see you guys tomorrow for another update. Okay, so we are on day five of the sunflower heat mat versus no heat mat experiment. Now what we're gonna do is take a look at all of our growth. So I'd assume these two non-heat mat trays are now ready to go into blackout like these two heat mat trays are, but let's take a peek. Okay, cool. So we have gotten rid of most of our seed holes. So that's exactly where we want the growth to be. So these look great. I'm really happy with all of these. Uh, the germination looks super solid and we have gotten rid of about 90% of the seed holes. Onto our sunflowers that have now been into blackout for a day. These also look pretty dang perfect. So what I'm gonna do with them, uh, the heat mat ones are now gonna come out of blackout, which is how we had these trays on top. Those are now gonna come off and these are gonna go directly into the light. And then the non-heat mat trays are gonna get a nice mist and then they're gonna go into blackout, which is just putting those tray, the reverse tray on top. So it just seems like so far we're only one day ahead on growth for the heat mat trays, but we'll just see how this turns out in the end. Maybe we'll get a higher harvest weight. Maybe there's gonna be something different about the product. We'll find out in a few days. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these all watered. Uh, I'm gonna introduce these two, the heat mat ones into the light. I'm gonna add nutrients to them. The non-heat mat are gonna get blacked out after they get watered, and then tomorrow they'll get introduced to the light. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for another update. All right, so it is day six of this sunflower heat mat experiment. So I'm gonna pull the um, blackout trays off the top of the non-heat mat trays. Now let's take a look at all the growth. So first thing I noticed whenever I walked out this morning on my heat mat trays is that I underwatered them. I think I didn't expect how much heat was actually happening underneath that mat and a lot of these sunnies kind of fell over towards the back, but that's okay because sunflowers recover extremely quickly. And in fact, that actually probably give them some red in their stem, which will make the flavor a little bit nuttier for all these sunflowers. So everything's looking great. We're get, we've gotten rid of 90% of our uh, seed holes on the heat mat side, and the cotyledons are beginning to develop, and we're starting to see the true leaves coming out. So probably in the next one to two days, we'll actually be harvesting these, but everything is looking great on these trays. Onto the non-heat mat, again, the germination is extremely solid. We've gotten rid of 90% of our seed holes. So everything is great. Uh, it's just one day behind our heat mat trays. I will be introducing the non-heat mat trays into the light today, and we'll just kind of see how this goes. It is day seven for this heat mat experiment, and today is gonna be harvest day because I am beginning to see true leaves appearing on the heat mat trays for the sunflowers and that means it is time to harvest. If these true leaves get any bigger, these crops become very bitter very quickly. So since we're gonna be harvesting the two heat mat trays, we're also going to be harvesting the two non-heat mat trays. The main reason being is that these are a control group and we wanna see where the growth would have been had we not introduced heat to the trays. So what we could do real quick, I guess is just take a quick glance at all their appearance and see what if there is any difference. So as for the heat mat side, I can see that we have really nice cotyledons. We are beginning to see the true leaves like I explained. And the color is nice, dark and green with a few little yellow blondies mixed in there. But for the most part, everything looks really wonderful on these trays. 
As for the non-heat matte side, we are in a lighter stage of green on the cotyledons. I think this is just because they are slightly behind in growth. And these cotyledons do need a little bit of extra time to kind of emerge and get their true color and let that true leaf come out a little bit. But overall, the appearance is great. All right, so I'm gonna get all of these trays harvested off of camera. What I'm gonna do is collect the weights and I'm gonna set some aside from each group and I'll see you guys in just a moment. Okay, so I just finished harvesting all four of the trays. Let's discuss the non-heat matte trays first. I combined them both in the same bag and one had a harvest weight of 571 grams and the other had a harvest weight of 532 grams, which was an average of 551.5 grams. Onto the heat mat trays, one bag had a harvest weight of 737 grams and the other bag had a harvest weight of 670 grams. So the average here was 703.5 grams. So there's about 150 gram average difference between these two um, groups here. So I set some aside from each group. So right here we have our two heat mat trays and over here we have our two non-heat mat trays. I think you can see here that the non-heat mat trays, the cotyledons are quite smaller, whereas on the heat mat trays they were quite bigger and the green was a little bit deeper on the heat mat than it was the non-heat mat. As for taste, we will go ahead and get a taste test going here. Give Mandy some. So this is the heat mat first. Very crunchy, very sunflower. I'm getting that nutty, very fr fresh flavor. Double thumbs up for the heat mat side. That tastes like sunflowers, it tastes great. There wasn't a lot of bitterness, very fresh tasting, a lot of crunch in it, very juicy, had a nutty flavor to it. Now I think that was a pretty dang good sunflower. Now let's taste the non-heat mat trays. All right, give a few to Mandy. I feed it myself. Let's taste the non-heat mat. Same thing, very crunchy, very juicy. There's not as much flavor, though it does really have a nice nutty flavor to it. Overall, I think it's another great product. I think I could have gotten a little bit more growth out of it and gotten the um, cotyledons a bit crispier. It was a little soft compared to the other group, but again, that's because I think it's just at a slightly earlier stage of growth. Okay, so the overall winner for harvest weight, appearance, and flavor is gonna be the heat mat trays because overall, they just had the best growth. But that is simply because they were one day ahead. Had the control group or the non-heat mat trays had an additional day of growth, I think that they would have easily caught up and everything would have been quite equal. Okay, so now let's quickly talk about cost. So running this heat mat throughout this entire duration cost us about 42 cents per tray throughout the entire period of this growth. That breaks down to about six cents per day per tray. So the, my main question becomes, did having heat throughout this entire process add a benefit or was it really just the germination process that really benefited from that, having that heat added? So for me, I feel like it was really the germination process that really benefited and created such an advantage in growth because that's where we saw the one day advantage clearly happen with the heat mat trays. Once they all began to grow in the light, I didn't notice the sunflowers growing any quicker or any better than the non-heat mat trays when they were in the light. So for me, I feel like that was really what happened here, but we're gonna be doing more experiments to figure out exactly what it could be. So that is the end of this heat mat experiment. We're gonna be doing a lot more of these in the near future, especially for commercial growers, such as stacking up trays and seeing how it can affect the germination on stacked trays as well. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give us a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. Our Instagram and our Facebook are both at On The Grow Farms. We have a website now where we have lots of great information and we're gonna to continue to do our best to update that. And it is www.onthegrow.net. So thank you so much, have a great day, and keep on believing.